you're under pressure. <laughs> Tonight I'm under heavy pressure, probably more than the 15 that we usually cook with. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that we can get you started on some exciting things in your families, uh, share it. Um, we're going to go over pressure cooking and pressure canning, and we're going to start with the pressure cooking. And that is uh, starts on the third page of your handout. Okay. So um, the difference between pressure cooking and pressure canning is just what it says. You're going to use pressure for both, but one of them, you're cooking your food that you're going to eat, and the <coughs> pressure canning is your cooking food that you're going to preserve in one way or another. And so, uh, well, I shouldn't say one way or another, it's canned, <laughs> bottled. Um, and so that's what we're going to start with tonight is the pressure cooking. And um, the first thing I'm going to tell you is um, my dear husband has really had some experiments on him. <laughs> um, uh, some I think a little easier to handle than others. So the first thing I wanted to say when we are pressure cooking is that you need to remember you're going to overcook everything at first because you're not used to those small amount of times. Really, uh, your pressure canners and cookers, and you can use a canner for cooking. With the big families we have, they're fantastic. You, um, with pressure cooking, you use other bowls and different things inside it for different types of foods, and so they're very versatile. And so you just need to remember that um, even if you've got a big canner, you can use them. You can use them and, uh, as a pressure cooker. But, um, so what we're going to do, this is Christine's presentation, so we're not going to have uh, this for mine, but, but what I wanted to uh, talk to you about, if you look at your handout, the reasons why we'll pressure cook, we're saving time, money, nutrients, we save work because of the convenience, and energy. Um, the other day I went over to Smith's and in their produce section they had, you know, they have their produce section where they sell things cheaper and I found a bunch of stuff, uh, bell peppers, I found the bell peppers and I thought, what am I going to do with them? So I went home and I made stuffed peppers and um, they were interesting. <laughs> um, they were edible, but I overcooked them. So. Um, you know, you learn as you go, so don't be discouraged if you have problems. Um, pressure cooking really is quite simple. Uh, you just need a few things. I'm going to go over first. Did Christine, you're going to go over the types of pressure cookers. Um, and so I will cover what I have here. Um, how many of you have these? I think I saw one come in tonight. Yeah, this is a cooker. You, do, you could never can in this. But um, this is what I remember my mother-in-law cooking many, many yummy meals in. It's loose. <laughs> you know, but I can still cook in it. I can still cook in it. And so that's for something really quite small. And then this one right here I have gotten um, more recent. And um, it's a Duramatic by Rikon, I'm not exactly sure. It's a, made in Switzerland, and um, it has a lot of things on it. If, you know, if you're going to get into pressure cooking, I, I would suggest you maybe get something a little, a little newer because they're not as frightening. Um, you're not going to blow yourself up. They have lots of safety, safety features on them. Um, there are some that have the seals. This one has a seal, uh, all American. It's the only one I could find online that actually is sealless, so you don't have to worry about buying seals. Um, and they had good reviews on those, but this one is one that has a seal. So what I'm going to do is, I want you to just kind of look at the picture there. You know, it's all written there, and so I don't want you um, to, I'm not going to go through it, but as you look through here, you can see the different uh, parts of the pressure cooker. Basically what it does is it makes the food hotter than you can get it in regular cooking. 
And I'm not going to go into all the details of how, how uh, much you know, more pressure is in there and things like that. But it cooks hotter, so it cooks faster. And all those nutrients stay in there, all the juices. Um, even um, vegetables, even if you cook them longer than what it says uh, to cook in your instructions. I put on the um, last page, I put down a few pressure cooking times. And at the bottom of that page, if you have a pencil, um, missvicki.com, M-I-S-S-V-I-C-K-I-E. Don't go wide. I did that one and you don't want to go there. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to go there. So I didn't look much, but it looked like, no, i got to get out of this. <laughs> so the website. The website. It's Miss Vicki, M-I-S-S-V-I-C-K-I-E.com. Um, I discovered her today. And... Um, she has lots of good things. She has a blog that she hasn't blogged on for a while, but it has some good ideas in it. Plus, her current website is very, very good on getting ideas, as well as these uh, sites I put down at the bottom. Um, you will find all kinds of cooking time uh, charts on these websites. <coughs> so, uh, plus, your cooker should come with one. Um, okay, going back. Now, because I wanted to tell you that, because when you're talking about the pressure cooker, you look, you find out you need water. Yes? So these cooking times, are they for our altitude? I'll go over that. Okay, and I will go over that right now, too. I have a, one of the questions and answers on my sheet asks about altitude. And it gives, it gives you, it's 5% for every 1,000, you're above 2,000. But, but that tells you here. But these aren't necessarily for our altitude. Um, no, no. You have to you have to look at the chart. In fact, FA, FAQ, uh, frequent questions and answers. If you look down at the very last question on there, uh, do you see it on your handout? Are there any adjustments that need to be made with pressure cooking at high altitudes? Yes, over 2,000 feet. So we're about 4,500 here. If you're up near the bench, it's going to be more than that. But keep that in mind. You increase the cooking times 5% for every 1,000 feet above 2,000 feet. Okay? Yes? Well, some of your cooking times say as short as 2 minutes. So you're cooking 5%. So it doesn't really matter. Besides, I wouldn't have a pressure cook spinach anyway. Hello. <laughs> you know, some of the, it only takes two some of the recipes you just pull it up to pressure, to 15 pounds pressure, and then you turn it off and you let it naturally cool down. And we'll go into different ways to cool it down. But when you're putting um, food in your pressure cooker, you put your uh, water in the bottom. Um, Many of the recipes require you to put the pan, your sub pans like this. You turn them up like this. You can turn them like this. There's some that are small like this, the trivets that you use. And so you don't put your food, um, it depends on the food, but it'll tell you in your recipe exactly what you need to do. So you put your water in and it tells you exactly how much water. You put your food in. Um, any of your foods that are legumes, grains, you only fill half full with the food. Your meats, your vegetables, other uh, fruits, you can fill up three quarters, uh, two thirds full. So um, those things. Like I say, if you have a canner, it will tell you these websites. Aren't we lucky in this day and age? We have these websites. But be careful about blogs. Make sure you go to some of the websites that have the, the approved, especially in canning. Cooking isn't as important, but the canning is. But you make sure that um, you cook the foods um, the specified amount. Remembering, don't overcook because you can cool down your pressure cooker quickly, 
check what you're cooking, and then start it back up um, and heat it back up. You're not done when you're done, but boy, when it's too done, you're done. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so anyway, okay. So we've got um, we've got a vent pipe <coughs> on all pressure cookers, um, and there's safety valves on all of the pressure cookers. Some of them rock. Those are the types that you'll find. I, I'm sure a lot of us have the type that rocks. And um, those are for, um, it'll tell you on there how much it rocks and that type of thing. But you have to be careful. Um, they usually, I, you really have a hard time blowing things up. I do, we were in Arizona this last week and um, uh, my husband's uncle, who's 89, we said, you know, we're trying to figure out how to do the beans and stuff, and he says, oh boy, do I have a story for you. And the beans, his mother was cooking in one of these types, and the beans went flying out and shot all over the kids and shot all over the room. And uh, would you ever do it again? Probably not. But, but anyway, um, the pressure cookers you have nowadays are are much safer. Um, and so you put in your food, you put in your water, and you connect it. Hook it up and turn on the heat. When it gets up to the pressure you're supposed to have, you turn it down. And one of the advantages, energy savings, as well as in an emergency, you don't need as much energy because you can turn it way down. You can use it on glass tops. You can use it on gas, ele um, electric. Um, you hear a lot about not being able to do things on the glass pots. Uh, pressure canning, you can't. But the pressure cooking, you can't. And so, yes? The timing that you have here, when do you start timing? You start timing when you hit the pressure. Um, okay, so, some of the rockers, how do you know when you hit pressure with rockers? Okay, the rockers, it's if, it's, if it's going really fast, it gets. That's so that's it changes its tone. Yes, it does. Um, and you'll have your pressure. You'll have the little. Um, these will pop up. They'll pop up when the pressure is on. <laughs> and then start timing when it pops up. No. Um, you, you have to kind of listen for the rocking. You listen for the rocking, and it, it can't be just a little. It has to be. That'll be the high. I mean, it'll still cook when it's not quite that high. It just might take a little bit longer. And then, when you are finished, you time it, and then you turn off the heat. There's three different ways that you can reduce the pressure. Um, the one is natural. You just let it sit until the button goes down. And on this one, I can touch this. And if it has more pressure in it a little bit, it'll hiss, but it won't burn you or anything. Um, all of them have that, um, even this type, um, it has the little thing that pops up and so you'll, you'll see it and it'll quit shaking and all of them, even this older one, has a little part here in the middle that pops up and that's how you, this one I think tells you how, how uh, what the pressure is by the amount it's up and the instruction booklets will tell you that. Um, so, the one method is just let it sit, take it off the heat and let it sit. Along with that, um, when you're cooking, if you're cooking meat and then you want to add vegetables for a stew, you cook the meat first, you pressure it, and then you, you can take your lid and your whole thing and you go over to the sink and it's really scary, you, but it's not really, but you put you put the water away from all of the gauges and things on it, and you put cold water in it, or you can set it in the sink with cold water, and then that will make the pressure go down faster. Yes? I think I worked my pan by, by doing that. It's the bottom of my pan got worse. Please. And we are always doing with hot water and then turn it to cold. Oh, That's what we used to do. But I still think it worked with my pan. It worked your pan. I've never had that experience, but has well, anybody... Just, was a, Presto, and it was the aluminum trying not to stay still. Uh -huh. I still use it. Uh -huh. but so maybe start was, with the hot and then go to the cold. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I still did that one still. Uh -huh. The other way that you can do it is um, they have releases. If it has a release, you can push on the release. And it 
shoots out in a safe manner. But you can't do that immediately. I was always told leave it alone. Because you could blow it up or you could do something. Yeah. Like, okay. Because well, yeah. I was at Sherry's house and she was canning yeah. on some of her canned tomatoes or something. And when it got to the time thing, she was just going to lift the little oh, no. gauge off. And I was like, no! Yeah, but still, it's lifting off the gauge or the not the little. These are a little harder. I, I would be careful with the kind that come off and rock. You you do have to be a little bit more careful. That that you probably do the cold method where you put it. Well, a pressure canner. I no, a pressure canner is never, ever. You let them always go down naturally. Yeah, correct. Correct. Yes, okay. So. Okay, and then, uh, so those three methods, natural, just letting it go down on its own, um, letting out a little bit of steam by pushing on your, all of, most of them have valves that you can push on, especially the newer ones, and then um, under the water um, to get it down. Um, when, like say, canning, never, ever uh, do a quick method to make sure that you let it go down on its own. Okay, um, along with these canners, I just brought a few things, just um, if you wanted to make souffles and cakes and cornbread, uh, things like that, you can make them in a pressure cooker. You put your ingredients in the pan, this is little because I didn't want to bring big things, but depends on your, what you can fit in your canner. You put this in, you put your cornbread, say, in it, and then you put a lid on it. If there's something that fits, if something doesn't fit, you can take tin foil and really wrap it around tight so that the steam can't get in it. You put your you put your rack in the bottom. Put tin foil over it with your food in it. You put the water that the recipe calls for in it. And you can do that before you put your food in. And I thought this was kind of neat. Some things are hard, you know, if it's in there, you have a hard time getting out. So they recommended that you take tin foil and you just cross it and you make handles so that you can bring it out. And then you can bring it out by the handle. Okay, and that's one method. Um, steaming, a lot of the cookers don't come with steamers, but I'm sure you've all seen these where you can steam your vegetables. And you can use any kind of metal, mainly stainless steel is best, but any kind of, this is, you know, you can make cheesecake in them, and your ramekins, and any kind of Pyrex, bowl, uh, stoneware, you can put those in and uh, cook in them. And so some of the recipes will call for that. Um, there are electric. Um, Pressure cookers. This one actually does all kinds of things. You can make rice, you can saute, you can slow cook, and you can pressure cook. Um, really check them out. This one, I was making meat in it, and I could only bring it up to 30 minutes, and the meat wasn't done. So I just reheat it a second time for another 30 minutes, and we had pork, pulled pork in an hour that was delicious. So the time savings is is amazing. And the recipes on the websites are endless. But just make sure when you're looking at some of the, the um, things about it, the uh, actual um, information on safety, you, you read what your canner says. That's the most important thing. Because every canner is a little bit different. But no, you never take off the lid until all the pressure is down. Okay, let's see. Do you have any questions? Yes. Green, that one that rice cook, slow cook. Um, green pan, green, G-R-E-E-N-P-A-N. I got suckered on HSM. <laughs> but it has lots of good things it can do. But I, I did have to, you're supposed to not leave your pressure cooker um, unattended anyway. Uh, and so just going back 30 minutes later and setting the timer and then I, well it dinged, and then I just went over and 
Clip it to your shirt. Tell you that every one of you that have bad 
stories, it was your fault. <laughs> Because it really does have all of the right 
information, the times, the poundage. Not this poundage, the poundage of a pressure can. So you're going to do it right. Did I see a hand? Yes. I tried. Did you ever find where you can order this? There's one place that it kind of said you can buy this at some Pennsylvania or something. I went there. It's no longer available. So, and I heard that, like, I looked it up on Amazon, and they actually said that it's the, it's very poor, and they would suggest just downloading it and printing it. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things that the part that I the part that I printed was the the guide one called Home Canning because it just had the information that I needed that I wanted for this presentation. But there's uh, poultry and meats, uh, fruits and fruit products, tomatoes and tomato products, vegetables and vegetable products. Fermented foods and pickled vegetables, jams and jellies, and then the principles of home cake. So you can see it's a large, a large um, volume of information. I do, I do know that the blue book, the fall blue book, is also a good candy guide. I have not looked at that, but I, I've heard that it's very good. Denise recommended that she said she want to just buy one. Another hand. Yes. Um, two questions. Okay. I too brew a ton of pie pumpkins, and when I went into it, all I could find was to dehydrate them, which I did. But I was really bummed because I wanted to bottle them, and there was nothing. I even had this habit of going to yard sales and buying old pressure canner instructions from days of yore. And now we have the internet. Our mom, she's so happy. And so I um, went through all of them. I even got on the internet and said, absolutely not. How come it didn't list it in the blue book, because I don't have this, that you could cube it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you knew it, but I didn't know. Somehow that. I knew that, but I don't know how. I, I just, I guess. Well, I was surprised. Inspiration. You didn't have <laughs> I looked it up in the Bible. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I really don't know. Is how it I in there? I have given, you will find out in just a second. I'm going to get to it. Do you have the answer to that? I do. Okay. The reason you can't find it now where you used to be able to is the, the uh, field continues to evolve and stuff they used to allow they don't think is safe anymore. That's why you need to get the most current instructions because the stuff that you, was the, the thing that you could can 20 years ago they're now saying oops we've had too many cases of botulism and we better not recommend doing that anymore. So that's Thank why you, you need to look. Perfect. And I do have instructions on how to cube and process your pumpkin. It's on, it'll be on the website. All the recipes of the items that I brought to display and that I'm familiar with. Uh, I know there's probably a bazillion more out there, but this is what I'm familiar with, so I have to talk about what I was comfortable with. Uh, it will be on the website. Uh, but I do have to say this, as a result of not being able to bottle it, when you cube it, you get less, and it wasn't the amount that I needed for a pie or for a recipe. So I freeze my pumpkin now. <laughs> In a canning class, you're probably not supposed to say that. Yes, AJ, do you have information you can share with us? Yeah, one of the things, you guys had a question about getting the instructions for some of your pressure cookers. I typically like to tell people, if they're going to get a pressure cooker, get a Presto. Presto is very well supported. Uh, most of you have Presto pressure cookers. I can get the gauges, the gaskets, the handles, the trivets down in the bottom of them. So Presto is a really good brand. I also like All American. That's the one that has all the, the knobs. foreign knobs on the top. Looks like the spaceship. They'll show up and get the trivet. Yeah. The Presto gauges will fit on those. Okay. In fact, many of you tonight that have had All Americans that I've tested. Those, the number that I put on there is a Presto part number. Now, is that the three part weighted gauge? No, oh. it is the pressure gauge, not the regulator. The regulator is the one that rocks. Okay, this is a, let me, let me, I'm going to go to the table, Mr. Cameron. <laughs> okay, so let me, we'll go through this in just a minute, but while we're here, I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you this. This is regulator. The regulator. This is a regulator. But this one is a weighted regulator. The pounds of pressure you adjust according to what you got five, ten, or fifteen options. This does not do that. This has to have the pressure cooker that has the gauge that dials up the pressure. 
this has both. There are pressure cookers that, that only have this. And then there is, am I, does that make sense? This is very important. So what is coming if you're ordering a Presto gauge for an All-American? Is it this kind? Or is it, wait, no. Yes. The gauge no, is regular. Oh, a gauge. The gauge is a dial. Yeah. Hello. The teacher just messed up. <laughs> If you have a Presto pressure cooker, okay. you can go to their website at gopresto.com. It's listed on the website, on the pages. And this is the most up-to-date instructions you can get is from that website. All it's American, fair. you can get them from their website as well. Thank you, AJ. He works in the business, so he should know. Yes. Oh, the government center is? No, the appliance service center. 1475 South Main? No, they're in 76. We haven't been there for almost two years. But there's signs still up, so when you go downtown, the building's they can't come Okay, AJ has a bunch of, I apologize. AJ has a bunch of business cards. I'll have him leave them on the table somewhere, and you can take them if you can correct that. I apologize. That is the address. Tell us the address. AJ, give us the address. Slowly. The address. Now, Appliance Service Center got bought by a company called ereplacementparts.com. Okay. So, that Appliance really? Service Center is still in business, but ereplacementparts.com is doing business at. So, they kept me on because some of them just don't know anything about appliances, but that's regardless. Um, <laughs> Thank you for staying on. Yes. The address is 7236. 7236 South. Oh, sorry, I'm giving you my home address. <laughs> <laughs> oh, AJ, you just made me look really good. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really confident now. It's 7036 South. 7036 South. This is good, guys. This is and good. it's 180 West. 180 West. The business cards I have tonight say High Tech Drive. But on 7200 South, the light is 180 West. Okay, get that 180 West is the light, so it's just east of the light, correct? It is north of the light. So at 7200 South. So it's the old Costco building. It is the old Costco oh, building. Okay, okay, that's okay. Sorry. Maybe I would just talk. Thank you, AJ. Okay. Uh, Denise, let's move on. Denise, um, okay, Denise covered most of the parts of the pressure cooker, and I just fumbled up and talked about the gauge versus the weight. Versus, you know, so it's like, get your book out, your own instruction manual, and study your own pressure cooker and understand what the parts are. But if you have a pressure cooker that has a lid that tightens on, a gasket, unless you have an American, it's made with metal. American, I'm sorry. A vent port, we'll talk about those. Um, the, well, the safety fuse, those are very important parts. So we're just going to kind of skip over the, that anatomy part. And just like Denise said, all pressure cookers can be used, all pressure canners can be used as pressure cookers, not all pressure cookers can be said that right, because <laughs> I have written here. So if you, you can't always can in a pressure cooker, but you can always cook in a can. Okay? Yes? Um, there's also a zillion films on YouTube if you okay. can watch. Okay. About, are they talking about process or are they talking recipes? Everything. You can find stuff about cookers. Okay, be careful. Canners. Be careful, because you've got a lot of bloggers out there that are just be careful. Always use recipes and documented, tested sources. Um, I, there's a lot of stuff my mother taught me that I would love to still be able to use, but I've kind of learned that I need to check it out. I need to make sure. And I'm not discounting what you said because they're fabulous to watch, and so a lot of us are visual learners, and that does help us. But be careful and always follow the recommended source, the recommended um, procedures for doing that. Okay, let's see. Only 
buy canners or use canners, they have the underwriter's laboratory approval. If your pressure canner does not have the features, the safety features, we've talked about it, replace it. Get rid of it. Don't send it to the DI. Get rid of it. Use it as a planter. Don't send it to the DI for someone else to buy or a yard sale for someone to pick up <laughs> that they're going to uh, be a careless cook with. So there we go. Okay, now let's talk just for a few minutes. We've done a little bit of this, and it might be some repetitive, but it's in the screen, so we'll go. So this is a weighted gauge pressure cooker with a dial. This is the All-American. The lid seals metal to metal. When you put these lids on, let's see if I can make this a cute thing work here. You, you tighten this one to this one, and then this one to this one, and then this one to this one, as you put the lid on. As you, so Tightens down. Otherwise, they get skew marking. I'll and then you can't get them on because it is a metal to metal kind of a thing. Um, these are probably the most number one, are the number one rated pressure cooker that you can purchase. Um, and we're not going to tell you where to buy them. You can figure that out for yourself because we don't do that in church. But that is one kind of pressure cooker, the weighted gauge. So this is the gauge. Oops, sorry. Can I go back? No? Oh, well. No, that's not it. Okay, here we go. The gauge is this part. No, the gauge is this part. No, no, no. And this, is, this, this is the dial. This is the dial, okay? And the weighted regulator. <laughs> the weighted part of that. Oh, dear. I'm, 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 all, I'm feeling, I don't feel confident what I'm saying because of that. I just embarrass myself. So, anyway, so you've got a dial. And the 5, 10, 15 petcock. I, I know what that term is. I'm going to use that one. On this one, you have both. The petcock is the. Mine doesn't have this. Mine has a petcock. A petcock is something different. That is not a petcock. A petcock is a little leather thing. I this so is a petcock in my term. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so as I refer to it, that's. Anyway, use your instruction manual. Become familiar with your own pressure cooker. And then you can call it what you want. <laughs> this one has a weighted gauge, gauge only. There is no dial. And so this one you have no way of knowing when the pressure is gone from your cooker. Not That's not bad. You just have to learn how long your cooker takes to come back down. And you can jiggle the pressure. There's time to do that a little bit uh, to see if the pressure is still there. Denise talked about pushing down the top. So these are fine kinds if you don't have a dial. It's just another kind that's out there. Uh, this is... Um, Dial gauges, and I'm sorry I call them pet cocks, so I guess that's not right. It's, that's what I've always called it, but that's my pressure cooker. <laughs> and you'll notice the feature, oops, oops, let me, sorry. The feature right here, this is the safety fuse that's going to blow out, and then this, on this one, it's behind the dial, in, if, there, if the pressure gets to, if you become a careless cook, that's going to blow out. But you're not ever going to do that because you're going to watch your pressure cooker when you're canning, because some of the processes take upwards of 90 minutes. Make sure you have something to do in your kitchen for 90 minutes, because you will need to watch them. You don't just walk away from them. That's being a careless cook. So um, be responsible if you're going to be a can. We talked about the electric ones. I'm glad that Denise had one we could show you. These are the new generation pressure cookers. They have no gauge or whatever this thing is called, pet cock. But I told you how they have the lid has the has the release on the side, all of the, the pressure and the, um, the pressure control is built into the handle of this one. The one that Denise has is built in that little, little thing on the top. Uh, those are powerful safety tools and they are good pressure cookers. Uh, the new generation pressure cookers, unless you have a 10 quart or larger, you cannot can in them. You can if it's large enough and it will include instructions to can in your new generation pressure cooker if it says so in your instructions. If it does not, do not think, well, okay, I can, I'll just I'm don't, okay? It doesn't tell you how you write it in your instruction manual. Don't do it. Okay, well, so if there's new generation pressure cookers, then this must be an old generation. <laughs>
pressure cooker, when, to, when you use a pressure canner versus a steam bath, a steam cooker or a water bath. Okay, so we're going to, the steam cookers are real popular, and this is not what this class is about, but I want to tell you something, because I learned that, you might have read this, that the USDA doesn't recommend the use of steam canners due to inadequate research and testing. However, Utah State University has done the testing on the steam canners and has found them to be safe and adequate for processing certain foods. Quote, if you use, if they're used according to instructions and safe canning procedures. Once again, read your manuals, follow the instructions. So don't try to, oh, I don't have to do it that Can long. you steam can in your pressure cooker? Because I know you can water bath in your pressure no, cooker. No, no. Doesn't have the, the steam process has to have an 18 inch flume of steam coming out the top. And I just don't know. No, don't steam pressure. You might. But you can water bath in your pressure. You can water bath in it, but I, I don't know that there would be the crossover of the steam, although you're using steam. It's a different process. I, um, there's more detailed information about that in this complete guide or the Bible of canning here. And then, um, of course, we all know what the water bath does and recommends you have two inches of water above the top of your bottles. Um, the recommendations for timing are all in the Kapika Guide for Canning. Um, but this little chart right here shows why you need to use a pressure cooker. It's all about the acidity of the food. All of your, fru all of your fruits can be water bath or steam. All of your vegetables need to be pressure canned because of the acidity of the food. There is some science behind that that I can tell you, and some of you might be really uninterested, but the rest of us would be bored. So I'm not going to go over that. There is, if you want to understand the science of all of this, it's explained in um, this particular guide, and it's all over the internet as well. Now, tomatoes are a kind of a borderline. There's been talk about the acidity of a tomato <clears throat> not being quite right to bottle in a water bath. It needs to be pressure canned. There are instructions that you can add, let me find it here, um, to ensure the safe acidity of whole, crushed, or juiced tomatoes, add both lemon juice or citric acid into each jar. There's more information on the amounts that you add for pints versus quarts on the Utah State Extension website that's on the second one on your handout here. However, there is no need to add those additional chemicals to your food if you pressure can everything to make it. So, just, that's an easy, that's a blanket oh, statement and it just works. Yes? So, I'm assuming that most people here have a pressure can or are going to get one. Does it make any sense to keep a water bath canner if you have a I never water bath with my pressure cooker. I always use my water baths. It's, it's a, a thinner walled, uh, my pressure cooker is well, right. Why not use the pressure canner for everything? To pressure can fruit, um, I, I, I don't know, wait, wait. wait. Uh, I pressure bring can. it up and, and bring it down, bring in the pressure up and letting it come down. I don't know if you'd even give it up to pressure before it would mush your fruit. To pressure me, are you, mean, are you talking about pressure canning fruit? Yeah, well, you, you know, maybe it's a five pounds pressure or that's what whatever I do. the book says. Right, thank you. This <laughs> is what says. This I, is good. Yes. I pressure can my peaches and my carrots and everything. And I just bring them up to like um, five pounds pressure. And turn them off. Mm -hmm. Do you, but how, how long does it take for the pressure to go out? Um, probably about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. It doesn't get, if okay, you do it too much, much, if you forget about it and are not careful, then you'll over, if it gets up to like 10, 15 pounds of pressure, they are much. Yeah, and then that, that 20 pounds, pounds okay. that 20 minutes to let your pressure come out of your cooker, it only takes 20 minutes to boil in a water bath. That's it. Well, I don't, I don't know because I just always, that's the reason I, I don't ever wait for the next batch, <laughs> I only do seven at a time. But you shouldn't pressure can I'd have to look and see in the book. If it says you can do it in the book, you can do it. Let's move on. <laughs> We're having a lot of fun here, but I've got a few more things to cover. Okay, so these are, now we finally got some of these 
guidelines. I want to go through this and I want you to pay very close attention. They are not hard. They are technical, but they are just, just a checklist and they are on the back of the front page, of the very first page. Uh, so we're just going to go through these because I want you to understand that you might have to write the headspace information at the top. I did, that's not included in the information I got. It's another whole discussion about headspace. But I learned <clears throat> that heads, how critical headspace is. I'm a canner who thought, that's another inch of food I can put in there. Bad information. Your headspace is critical. And uh, this little chart right here shows the quarter inch in for the jams and, let's see, jams, uh, jellies, a half inch for fruits and tomatoes in a water bath, and a full inch, full inch, a full inch to an inch and a quarter for foods to be processed in a pressure canner. And the reason is because there has to be all of the air is sucked out of the food and out of the jar during the pressure canning process. And if you don't have enough head space, you will not get a proper vacuum and you will get a false seal. False seals can come undone in your basement. Head space is critical. It's very, very important. So pay attention to the amounts of space that you're canning and your instructions will tell you how much head space to leave and pay really close attention when you're pressure canning because that's really important. Okay, so let's go through these really, really quickly because they're kind of, the details are listed there. I'm just going to read them as, let's see, read them as we go through here. So the candy Bible has details about filling jars, cleaning off tops, uh, all that kind of information. So um, go to your candy guide. For, if you're not familiar with how important it is to clean off the tops of your jars and, and that kind of stuff. So here we go. These are just the basic steps. Two to three inches of water in your can. There's more details on your handout, so I'm not going to go through all that. But you can look through it if you have any questions, go through it. So start with two or three inches of water in your can. More if the process is longer. I almost boiled my can or dry during the 90 minutes of beans the other day. Never had that happen. I was like, did I keep the pressure too high? What was the deal? So more if the, if the processing time is longer. Jar, put your jars in your canner, and it shows to use a little bit here. If your jars are hot, you know, be careful. Don't burn yourselves. That's just kind of the lid on, but the, and I call this the pet cock, so I'm sorry, this thing off. So the lid is on, and then, oops, exhaust for 10 minutes. That means when the steam starts coming out of the, I go, just leave it there. I'll just go get it. Come right back. means when the steam starts coming out of this little cute thing, okay? A uh, full stream, shh, time it for 10 minutes, no less. That's the process that pulls the air out of the food and out of your jars. And it's critical, 10 minutes, vent it. Um, I was, a lady, a lady was telling me, I uh, learned how to do meats, uh, canned meats the other day, and she said, oh, I've never taken that off. And yet her product has always sealed, so I was like, oh! Now what if it doesn't work and we took it off? <laughs> but thankfully it did, so I was really grateful for that. But there's always going to be an exception to you know, the kind of situation that was, um, just because it's so I just described it. Every description always talks about 10 minutes of a full gushing steam of, or, you know, plume of steam. I'll get the terminology here right. Um, so exhaust for 10 minutes. Then you put the pet cock on. Or, I'm sorry, I don't the regulator. The regulator. <laughs> I thought I had all these terms all figured out, and I really lost confidence. Start the timing when the pressure is reached. So, steam 10. Check up on, pressure's going to rise on the dial, or it's going to jiggle. I had a, my daughter in law's mother was at a family party with us the other night, and she said, Oh, my pressure cooker drives me crazy. That jiggling, I just think it's going to blow up. But the jiggling of that pet cock is what tells you that it's working. And your instructions will say things like one to two jiggles per minute. That's not a whole lot. And so you don't have to have a big one. This thing jiggles the entire time it's on my lid because I have a dial. I don't have the weighted regulator. This thing, just a, just a really uh, gentle, gentle jiggle. Oh, that sounds like shit. Um, that was not whatever. Okay, so start the timing when the pressure is reached. Regulate the pressure. You may have to adjust. I learned something with soap. 
interesting, if you, as it begins to reach its 13 pounds, then turn the heat down just a little bit and let it come that last little bit slower so it doesn't come to here and you turn the heat down and you know, you cheat your back from That's really bad for getting liquid to gas, you know, just plume out of your bottles. So bring your pressure up the last pound or two slower and maintain it if you go up to 14 or 15 pounds. Maintain it at 14 or 15. Don't bring it back down to 13. That's that just makes some juice go out of your food <laughs> or out of your bottles. And then that's not good. Some has to come out because it's boiling or whatever, or will come out. But if pieces of par if particles of food come out, the chance of a bad seal is there. And so you want to not have any more of that come out than you have to. So uh, regulate the pressure. And then when it's done, when your timing's done, turn off the heat. On an electric stove, you need to move it off so the heat's gone, gas in it there. The less you move your cooker after the timing is over, the better you are because you've got a jar in there and it's just, it's just fragile because it's got all this pressure pulling air out and pressure, steam is working, and you jiggle it and it's like, whoa, give up, I'm done. And it just shoots all the air, all the juice out or uh, breaks the jar or tips it over, especially in the ones where you have to really tall where you can double up your jar. So turn off your heat, just let it sit there. Um, depressurize, and like Denise said, only, and I repeat, we'll go over there's a slide I have here, only way to get the pressure out of a pressure canner that has glass jars of product in it is the natural method. You just have to let it sit there until it is not. And then any more pressure. Don't do anything in a hurry, too bad. <laughs> Always. Clean up your mess that you've made in your kitchen, whatever it takes. So depressurize so it come down completely natural. Um, take the pet cock off. This is something else I learned. Take the pet, the, the regulator on. You'll learn this before the night's over. Regulator off. And then wait for two minutes before you take the lid off. Because you've got an environment inside that pressure cooker where there's sure steam and it's under pressure. It's just, it's hot. 240 degrees. And you just take the lid off all of a sudden. What's that going to do to your jars? What's that going to do? And all of a sudden, if one's just just right to explode or whatever, no, no, we don't explode. <laughs> the bottom of a jar will break off, and jars don't explode. And but the, the again, the water will shush out of the shush. That's a perfect word. <laughs> out of the bottles, and so a regulator off. Two minutes. Then take the lid off. And when you take your lid off, take it off this way. So that all the steam goes that way and not, where's it going to go if I lift it off this way? In my face. Always use mitts on your arms because as you take it off, something's going to come out the side as well. Um, and steam is a wicked burner. So be very, very careful when you take that off. You've got 240 degree steam that's built up inside that cooker. So take your lid off very carefully. Um, and then, so the waiting of the, the wait time to take the regulator off is good. Remove the lid, tip away, remove the lid, tip it away, remove the jars and let them cool. Rings off, clean jars, and I'll tell you that, taking the rings off, label store and enjoy. Yes? Um, I learned something from you um, that I think should be shared. Okay. How, how you said it's important to take the lid off, because there's times where I had it. Can you explain that? Yes, I will. Uh, so two things, don't forget to explain the rings and then the lids. Um, years ago, I was canning beans my mom's way, which is dry beans, water, pressure cooking. Mm -hmm. End of story. Easiest, simplest way there is. I have instructions on how to do beans correctly now, and it's much, much better. It takes a little longer, but it's the approved method. Um, and I always, and old beans, we can old beans of Keith's mom's, and yes, pressure cooked beans. And they don't have that musical fruit effect on you that <laughs> Okay, back to the question of the lid. Oh, yeah. Let me finish the lid and then I'll get your question. So, I don't like the smell. Not a musical
the pressure cooker, the beans, we take a load out the pressure cooker, and so I start taking the pressure cooker outside. I just forget about it. I mean, I've been watching that thing for 90 minutes, let somebody else tend it. And <laughs> so I go out there hours later and take the lid off, and the beans were sealed. I'm like, oh, good, they're all sealed. That's great. So I, you know, whatever, take them downstairs. And I started having them unseal. So if you let your pressure, if you let your bottles seal in the pressure cooker, it's a false seal because it has sealed under the environment in that pressure cooked environment with high heat. Um, well, the heat's come down, but the high pressure and the, all that stuff, and so it's not right. So as soon as your pressure cooker has come, has depressurized, take the lid off and take the beans out. Let them seal in the barometric pressure that's in your house because then it's going to be a true vacuum seal that's going to last until you take it off. Did, was that how I, did I explain that right? One second. You had a question back there. Don't forget to read. I was, I was doing tomatoes and I uh, did everything you said. When I was taking the bottle out, I put it onto a cookie sheet and the whole thing exploded. Oh, the whole kitchen. That's kind of one of those laws of physics. Too hot on too cold. They recommend a cooling rack or a towel. Thick layers of newspaper will do the same thing. Because sometimes the jars, well, the jars are wet. Um, we had an interesting thing after we finished doing this chicken the other day. There was, uh, do you know what white dust is? For those of you that have used humidifiers, <coughs> hard water will make white dust. As the, you know, same thing was all over the jars and the inside. In fact, you can see it inside the pressure cooker. It's like. Well, I have soft water, so mine doesn't, doesn't do that. But the home we were doing the canning in was had hard water, and we have white dust on the jars of food and stuff like that. But that told me that that was truly a steam process because that's what that's how white dust is created. So rings, okay. The reason you take the rings off of your jars before you take them to the basement is the same principle. Is another safety principle of the seal. If you um, Oh, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, the ring on it. If you leave the, the ring on the bottle, there's pressure. It's there for a reason when you're pressure when you're processing. But when the processing is done and the seal has, has happened, take the ring off because the the pressure of the lid, the, the ring on the lid can create another false seal. If the seal is not good. Having a ring on is not going to make any difference. It will actually make it worse because if you go to the basement or you go to your pressure cooker and, it's on. and you find a lid that's off, what are you going to do with the food? Throw it, Throw it away. But if you left that ring on it and there's goo under there and it's kind of wounded to the lid or to the jar or it's um, allowed there to be some stuff grow in your bottle because it's not sealed, it could actually seal again with the <coughs> bad stuff. Inside the jar, and you might not know that or can tell that. So, having the ring off is a good thing. Someone had a question. Denise? Um, I thought I read several times that you're supposed to leave the ring on the hours. Yes, yes, 24 hours. Did I remove jars that cool, rings off, pink jars, latest storage jar? Yeah, so 24 hours. That's, and I think that's even listed on the paper. Do you, clean your, do you clean your jars before you take the rings off? No. Because I do have hard water, so I always wash all my jars off because I don't want to go with the jars. Plus, well, if you do anything, wash your jars. I, I put them, them in the sink the and, you know, wash, them, the and wash them so they kind of wash them both before and after. But you want, you want to wash them after the ring is off because that's where the, the, the stuff potential stuff is. Yeah, the gunky stuff. Yes? Um, before you start the canning, how tightly do you screw Finger tight. Finger tight. Don't crank it down with your palm. Finger tight. And it will tell you that on any list of preferences for your jars. Yes? Do not take your ring off till the, pop, till the seal has been created. It's holding it there in place for a reason. So once your jar is sealed, if it doesn't seal, leave the ring on, put it in your fridge and use the product. It is a heat to 24 hours, she just said. Yeah, 24 hours. Just leave the rings on about 24 hours. And then it'll cool with it. Your beans and some things will boil in the jars for hours and hours after you're done. So anyway, oh, we've got some more. Okay. Releasing the pressure. We talked, Denise talked about this. And so the only method to use when you're pressure canning is a natural method. So just, you know, turn on the music. Don't go for a drive. That was just the funniest picture. 
Okay, now, we talked about this thing being a Bible. Now, speaking of the scriptures, I never teach that I don't try to use something from the scriptures, but I'm sad to say that the word pressure is not in the scriptures. <laughs> so, I had to do a little creative and took a little while to find some scriptures, but this is what I found. And the Alma 57, 21 is on your handout, but let me see. And that, you have to understand how I teach you the scriptures, and you'll get that when I read this to you. So, uh, yay, and they did obey and observed to perform every word of command with exactness. Yea, and did remember the words which they said unto me, which they said unto me that their mothers or their teacher had taught me. Okay, got that one. Job 32, 18, I love this. For I am full of matter which hath no vent, and is ready to burst like new bottles. It's talking about pressure can. I just love it. <laughs> Sorry. And Doctor of Heavens went on my, in his hot displeasure, <laughs> appoint them their portion. <laughs> and then I have some family, this one I was really grateful. DNC 121 45. Then shall thy confidence wax strong in the presence of God, and shall distill upon thy soul as the dews from heaven. Distilling water and steam are his <laughs> so now let's this, this, this pull it all together. So I hope you and I have to read this because I <laughs> so I hope you'll remember and obey with exactness the things which we have taught you here tonight, so that there will be no burst bottles and no hot displeasure with your results. <laughs> and I hope your family will enjoy the portions <laughs> and your confidence will wax strong as you labor to prepare and preserve foods in a pressure cooker. Now read that, there's two ways to do that. Of course I can. Or of course, I can. I thought that was easy. Anyway. Okay. Um, I've been using a pressure cooker my whole married life, but I learned a ton preparing for this presentation. And so hopefully those of you who are afraid of your pressure cooker or who do not own one, or who have given yours away, go claim it back, dig it out of the back of your closet, and make it your friend. Um, for those of you who are already comfortable, with your canny friend. I hope you've learned something new. And then you can go home and make something wonderful and yummy that will make dinner next week a snack. And all of the handouts, all of the recipes that are over here on the table, the products that I use, and all of the handouts you have here tonight are on the area website. And this is the, that skip right there. Question. So it sounds like the cooking time is a lot shorter. Okay, you're asking, uh, let me just make sure I understand your question. You want to know, once you put the regulator on, when right? When you put it on the, the stove and you turn your heat on, turn how long on. is it going to take to get okay. heat up to where all that stuff's going to happen and the regulator's going to go and it's spouting out for 10 minutes? It's just regular cooking up. Well, you know, 20 minutes. plan on several hours. Oh, no, she's going to process the food. You get ready to go in the jars, and then bring out your jars, bring the lids hot, so then you get your food in there. Uh, then you're going to put it in your pressure cooker and put it in high, high heat to bring that steam up till it's venting out, pluming out the top. And, um, sorry. So the, the steam is coming out, you put the regulator on, 10 to 20 minutes. Ten minutes of steam. Um, it's going to take about five minutes to bring it up to pressure. That's kind of a guess. Okay. Five minutes of pressure. I mean, to bring it up to pressure. Then, however long, uh, beans are twenty minutes. Green beans are twenty minutes. Uh, the bottle of soup, the vegetable soup I did over here is twenty minutes. The chicken and the dry beans, ninety minutes in a quart. I do seventy-five, and then probably another half hour of time. You know, for the pressure to come out to be pressurized, and one second. Okay. Um, Just regular cooking, though. You don't have to let it vent for ten minutes before you put your. No, no. The, the venting is to pull the air out of the out of the bottles and then. Yes.
two questions. Uh, black shirt, gray hair, and tall man. Okay, you didn't say anything about how okay, long. Okay, green shirt, sorry. Oh, go ahead. How long do the cans, the bottles last on your shelf? That's what I want to know. I'm the wrong person to ask that because I use stuff off my shelf till it's gone. Well, but are 10, 20 years? I mean, how long? Oh, no, I haven't been here that long. So this has to be a company. No, I have that. stuff in my pantry that's in mean, my basement. I have a very cool fruit room, too, so that can help, too. But I have stuff down there that I bought probably five years ago. And if you... Nice throw them in. <laughs> so Some if it's do. older than five years or three years, if you eat it, is it, what, is it the botulism? What it says? No, no, it's just taste so good. It's just it, 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 AJ, okay. type in here. Easy answer for you. How long you can keep it on the shelf? Yeah. It depends upon what it is. The best answer is to check with USU Extension Services. They will be able to tell you. And like I said, it is food specific. It's different for tomatoes, as it is for pears, as it is for peaches. So. Probably like many of you, I've eaten stuff that has been sitting on a shelf for I don't know how many years. I am obviously here, I don't know about healthy, but I am living. So, but check with USU Extension Services and they can tell you the shelf life. Thank you, and it's probably listed in here as well if you were to look under each of the. There are recipes in here and just in the guide. I just want to encourage you to do that. Okay, uh, okay, green shirt. I just wanted to share a story, a true story, about the importance of following directions and taking advantage of modern methods. Thank you. My mother uh, tells a story of when she was a little girl and lived on a farm in Payson. And her mother had always canned vegetables, everything just with a cold pack, water bath canner, because that's all they had. One day, a, man, a salesman came along to all these farms had this new invention called a pressure cooker. And he tried to convince my grandmother that it was no longer safe to use the water bath canner. And she, you know what she said? I've done this for years and years. I've never had a problem. So mother tells that um, during that fall and winter, down in the cellar, every one of the jars of food that they had canned, the old water bath method, spoiled. So God protects you until something better comes along, and then we better take it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my testimony. I've heard her tell that story many times. I am so glad you can tell us that your family's story is going to die. <laughs> because you can smell spoilage in fruit. You can't smell botulism. It's just going to be there, you're going to eat it, and you're going to get sick. And yeah. you might die. So, good, not good. Come on, go. Tom and that. If you're <laughs> like pressure cooking beans that have been soaked, do they have a different cooking time than if you're pressure cooking soaked beans canning them? Okay. The instructions that are on the handout that you are going to receive on the website, that's already posted on the website, is the USD recommended amount of time if you for to to can beans? I soaked too many, so I tried to pressure. I pressure cooked them, and like Denise said, it's all a kind of a <laughs> first time you did to overcook them. I made beans mush, <laughs> and so I had too many to cook in the in the, the cooker, and so I tried it again, and I did it last time. I paid more attention because I wasn't sure how long to cook them because. The soak time is different if you're just going to cook them to eat versus prep them to can. And so, did that answer your question? It did. Also, another comment. I found that if you, when you're soaking your beans, if you'll boil them for two minutes, it's on the instructions. Then, then let them soak. One hour. All the gas is gone. The musical fruit. You just have to be careful that when you're doing your beans, one of the reasons that you soak them and rinse the water and soak them more and rinse the water is because there is a lot of dirt, insect material, etc., on those beans that you don't see. But if you, um, I saw it on the website. They showed how much. So a good reason to soak your beans is to get rid of a lot of that dirt and grind just on the beans. Okay, I'm not used to bottle them from raw, and the thickness of the 
liquid, I didn't bring them, I should have, but the, the thickness of the liquid on the beans was more like mud. I always rinsed them off, but anyway. Sherry wants to take, uh, do something here, and so we're gonna end. Thank you for coming. Uh, Denise and I will be around. You can ask some more questions to us. Uh, thanks. I don't feel so fresh, much pressure.